cartilages. So this is a cartilaginous part and the bony part. So about the nasal cavity, it extends from the external nerve to the posterior nerve, that is the concha. Okay, from the external nerve to the concha, isn't it? And divides into left hand, right hand by the nasal septum, isn't it? So right hand, left, right hand, left nasal cavity, isn't it? So it is divided by the nasal septum, partition between, isn't it? And each half, it is having the floor, roof, lateral wall and the medial wall. See here, it is a cut section to the nose, isn't it? So this is a nasal septum, okay? And this boundary, this is a lateral wall of the nose on either side, isn't it? and the roof okay and the floor floor of the nasal cavity isn't it floor roof and medial wall that is by the medial septum isn't it nasal septum and this is the lateral wall okay is it clear now so this is a nose isn't it so by the nasal septum, it divides into two parts, right and left. So it is having roof, floor, medial wall and the lateral wall, isn't it? So medial wall it is by the nasal septum. So the lateral wall, it bears a concha, isn't it? Concha is here, lateral wall of the nose. Next is about the roof, it is narrow and it is formed by the body of the sphenoid, okay, body of the sphenoid and the nasal bone, okay, and the frontal bone, and this is a ethamoid bone, isn't it? So, ethamoid, sphenoid, frontal, and the nasal bone, okay. So, this is a roof of the nasal cavity, okay, and the floor, here it is the floor, it separates the oral cavity from the nasal cavity, isn't it? So the flow and it is formed by the hard palate. So it is formed by the hard palate. This is the partition, isn't it? Between the oral cavity and the nasal cavity. So this is the floor of the nasal cavity. So this is about the roof and the floor. Next is medial wall or nasal septum. So it is a osteocartilaginous partition. Okay, osteocartilaginous partition. Okay, it is by the bone and the cartilage, both, isn't it? Nasal septum. And it is formed superiorly by the vertical plate of the ethamoid bone here. Okay, vertical plate of the ethamoid bone and inferiorly. <coughs> and also by the omer. So this is a omer bone. It is by the omer bone and the perpendicular plate of the ethamoid bone. Okay, so anteriorly by the septal cartilage. So this is cartilaginous area. So it is by the septal cartilage bone that is perpendicular plate of the ethamoid and the omer bone. Okay, so <coughs> this is about the medial wall of the nasal cavity. Next is <coughs> lateral wall. So lateral wall there are uh, uh, so this lateral wall shows three horizontal bony projections okay lateral wall bears okay are having shelf like structures bony shelf like structures so those are called the concha okay so these are called the concha three horizontal bony projection one two and three isn't it Similarly here, 1, 2 and 3, okay. And the superior and the middle concha are the part of the ethamoid bone, okay. So this superior and the middle concha, these are the part of the 
atomoid bone, whereas the inferior cocci, it is an independent bone. Okay. It is an independent bone. And the cavity below each concha is called as the meatus. Okay. Cavity between the two concha. Okay. There is a space between the two shelf like structures. That those are called the meatus. So superior meatus, middle meatus, and the inferior meatus. Okay. These are the spaces. So see here superior meatus, middle meatus, and the inferior meatus between the concave. Okay, the lateral wall of the nose. Is it clear now? These are the three concave, superior, middle and the inferior. Superior, middle and the inferior. In between these concha, it bears a space, is okay? So that is nothing but the meatus. Okay. Meatus. Between the superior and the middle, superior meatus. Okay. And between the middle concha and the inferior concha. So here, this area, this is middle meatus. Middle meatus. So below the inferior meatus, this space, which is the inferior meatus. Inferior, middle and the superior meatus. So the sp small space above the superior concha is called the spinoathamoidal recess. So this is the superior concha. Okay, superior concha. Above this, here it bears a space here, isn't it? So this is nothing but the spinoathamoidal recess. Okay, spinoathamoidal recess. Superior meatus, middle meatus and the inferior meatus in the lateral wall of the nose. So the this is a atria. Okay. Atria just in front of the middle meatus. This space. Is that it? And below and in front of the atrium and just within the nostril lies the vestibule. Okay. Vestibule, atrium and agar nasi. So this is nothing but the mucosal fold which limits the atrium. Okay, just it's a mucosal fold here. So this is a atrium, vestibule and the agar nasi. Okay. So the Due to presence of this concave, increase the surface area of the nasal cavity. So, if it is a straight, there is a less surface area, isn't it? So, it is shelf-like projection which is lined by a epithelium. So, this provides the increase in surface area. Okay. Why it is needed? Surface area, increase in surface area. Whatever inhaled air. It has to moisten, isn't it? So, it has to undergone air condition. So, purification of the air it requires, isn't it? So, it requires a space. Okay, that is why to increase the surface area, these are present, isn't it? Concaves. Okay, so these provides the increased surface area and the recesses and the BRD receives the openings of the paranasal sinuses and the nasolacrimal duct. Okay. So there is a superior, middle and the inferior meatus are there, isn't it? So those provide the opening for the sinuses, paranasal sinuses and the nasolacrimal duct, isn't it? <coughs> so these are the concave, superior, middle and the inferior concave, inferior concave, middle and the superior in the lateral wall of the nose on either side left and right, isn't it? So this is a nasal septum. So what are these? These are the paranasal sinuses, that is the maxillary sinus okay, and the 
frontal sinus. Okay. Frontal sinus, maxillary sinus. We'll go through that in the next slide. <coughs> so the spinoethamidal recess, it receives the opening of the spinoidal sinus. See here. Okay. Here, this recess, it provides the, the spinoidal ear sinus opens here. Okay. There is communication between the this uh, spinoethamidal recess and the spinoidal sinus. Okay. So what are the uh, we go through that in paranasal sinuses? Just you have to have an idea about so this recess it provides the opening of the spinoidal sinus. Okay. And this is a superior meatus. So, in superior meatus, it receives the opening of the posterior ethamoidal sinus. Okay. So, the, there are three sinuses, anterior, middle and the posterior ethamoidal sinus. Okay. So, the posterior ethamoidal sinus opens in the superior meatus. Okay. So, about the inferior meatus, so this is a inferior meatus. So it receives the opening of the nasolacrimal duct. Okay, it, here it receives the nasolacrimal duct here. See here. Here the this is the nasolacrimal duct and it opens in the inferior meatus. Okay. What is this nasolacrimal duct? Whenever there is a excess of tear, okay, it comes to the nose, isn't it? Tears. So especially in the crying or in the sniffing, isn't it? Suddenly you will have a drop, water drop, isn't it? That is the nasal lacrimal that opens here in the inferior meatus. Okay, especially in the crying, this thing. So there will be a uh, water comes from the nose, isn't it? Yeah. So the nasolacrimal duct opens in the inferior meatus. So this is about the recess, the spinoethamidal recess, superior meatus, and the inferior meatus. Next is the middle meatus. Okay. So this part it is the middle meatus. So it shows rounded eminence. So it shows rounded eminence. It is due to the middle ethmoidal sinus. Okay, inside there will be a middle ethmoidal sinus. Okay. And <coughs> uh, the curd groove here okay. So here the maxillary sinus opens. Okay. And the here the anterior part here the Opening of the frontal and the anterior ethmoidal sinuses. Frontal and the anterior ethmoidal sinus. Okay, and the maxillary sinus opens in the middle meatus. Okay, is it clear now? In the middle meatus, what are the openings? Maxillary sinus, anterior, and anterior ethmoidal sinus, and the frontal sinus. Okay, three sinuses are opening, opens in the middle meatus. Next is about the, is it clear? Hmm? Okay. Lining of the nasal cavity, the vestibule, vestibule, this is lined by a modified skin and has a short curve here called the vibrissae. Okay. So, in the nasal cavity, there is a hair, isn't it? So, those are called the vibrissae. And the roof and the upper part of the septum, the upper surface of the superior concha and the spinoethamidal recess are lined by a olfactory mucosa. Okay. Olfactory mucosa and rest of the cavity it is lined by the respiratory mucosa okay so there is a olfactory mucosa and the respiratory mucosa olfactory mucosa it is for the smell okay identification of the smell and 
rest is the respiratory mucosa. So for the olfactory mucosa, see here olfactory nerve. Okay. So here it is the ribby from plate. So in the skull, is it? Ribby from plate. So it bears the pores or foramina for the olfactory nerves. Okay. And which serves as a receptors for the olfactory stimuli. So here olfactory receptor cells are there. Okay and which bears a cilia okay and this is a mucosal layer and the sense of smell plays a major role in the flavor of foods and it is common for individuals who lose their sense of smell to report that food loses its taste somewhat tasteless when person has a cold isn't it so when the person was cold he can't able to recognize the taste isn't it and the most air breathe in normally flows through the nose but only small part which is the olfactory mucosa okay and enough to get response to an odor that causes a snuffing isn't it snuffing and however this increases the flow of the air over the smell receptors to identify the smell okay to identify the smell so this is about the olfactory mucosa next is respiratory mucosa so it is the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium is that it respiratory mucosa and rests on the thick network of the thin walled veins that warms the air so it has to warm to <coughs> inhale the air so the thick frame of the thin walled veins are present here so that provides the warming of the air okay inhale air okay and glands produce the mucus which is moistens the air and cleans the air by trapping the incoming bacteria and the debris okay so there are mucus glands are present isn't it in the respiratory mucosa which secretes the mucosa so the if there is a, any bacteria or dust, this, that, so it will stick into that. Okay, so like that, the air gets purified. Okay, so it is a air conditioning chamber. Is that it? For the <coughs> inhaling the air. And cilia, so it bears a cilia, helps in moving the contaminated mucus posteriorly towards the throat where it is swallowed and digested by the gastric. Okay. And so the respiratory mucosa that is nothing but the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium wherever you go in uh, the trachea in this okay respiratory mucosa that is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So what is this pseudo pseudo stratified? No. So false stratified is that it? Stratified means more than one layer, isn't it? So more than one layer, that is the stratified. So pseudo stratified means false stratified. So it is a single layer, otherwise, isn't it? So this epithelium, it is a single layer. So it looks like a multi layer, isn't it? Why it is looks multi layer? Yes. Because of presence of the nuclei. Usually in columnar or uh, cuboidal epithelium, single layer, the nucleus are present at the line, in the same line, isn't it? Whereas in <coughs> case of pseudo stratified epithelium, though it is a single layer, nuclei are present in the different positions. So one nuclei may be at the basal side, one nuclei to the uh, surface uh, uh, in the surface, so some are in the middle. So totally, by looking, it looks like a multi-layer, isn't it? That is why the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay. Next is about the nerve supply. So the nasal cavity receives both sensory and the visceral innervation. The sensory innervation, it is by the so the olfactory 
mucosa it is supplied by the olfactory nerves the nerves of the general sensation are derived from the ophthalmic and the maxillary nerve okay so the anterior part it is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal nerve okay and the posterior ethmoidal nerve okay so here it is a olfactory nerves is that it so these are the branches from the maxillary nerve okay and these are the branches from the olfactory nerve is that it so the general sensation it is by the ophthalmic and the maxillary nerve so these are the branches from the ophthalmic and these are the branches from the maxillary nerve okay about the general sensation next is about the visceral innervation so it is by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nerve innervation so the sympathetic fibers arrive from the superior cervical ganglia and it is distributed through the plexus around the arteries okay and supplies mainly to the vascular smooth muscle so by this there will be a vaso constriction okay and vaso dilatation okay sympathetic and the parasympathetic fibers arise from the neurons of the pterygo palatine ganglia that pours in the naso palatine nerve and its branches supplies the mucosal gland okay which supplies the mucosal gland to secrete the mucus okay so this is about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic innervation of the nasal cavity so what is this pterygo palatine ganglia what are the other ganglia so these are the parasympathetic ganglia what are ganglia you know in the body say what what para muscle mm. dorsal root ganglia you heard in the spinal nerve sensory is that it dorsal root ganglia so these are the pterygo palatine ganglia otic ganglia ciliary ganglia so these the otic ganglia the pterygo palatine ganglia okay ciliary ganglia all these are parasympathetic ganglia so what is ganglia collection of the nerve cells outside the central nervous system collection of the nerve cell bodies isn't it yes. so it is nothing but the ganglia so it is like a relay station outside the cns so inside the cns we will call it as same thing aggregation of this nerve cells nuclei we will call it as a nuclei inside the brain or central nervous system so outside we will call it as a ganglia okay just collection of the nerve cells Yes. So about the pterygopalatine uh, uh, ganglia, uh, it gives the nerve uh, uh, palatine nerve, or the maxillary gives it. So from this pala uh, pterygopalatine ganglia, from this ganglia, nerve arises, nasopalatine nerve. Okay. So uh, ultimately the maxillary nerve will get relay into that. So it is like a station. Okay. Relay into that. So from that pterygopalatine ganglia. Supplies the mucosal glands. Okay. So similarly, otic ganglia is there. So pterygo palatine ganglia, it is located in the pterygo palatine fossa. Okay. Posterior to the body of the maxilla, one space is there. There it is located, pterygo palatine ganglia. Okay. So the parasympathetic, it is by the pterygo palatine ganglia. So from the naso palatine nerve, supplies the mucosal gland. Okay, for the parasympathetic supply. Sympathetic sure. through the arteries, which supplies the smooth muscle. Okay. Originally, you have the maxillary nerve, which goes to the pterygopalatine uh, uh, ganglion, which gives the nasal mm. So, next is about the arterial supply of the nasal cavity. So, 
that is by the spinopalatine artery it is the branch of the maxillary artery okay and the it is the main artery and alar and septal branches of the superior labial artery okay so here the superior labial artery and anterior and the posterior ethmoidal artery and these are the branch from the ophthalmic artery so these are the branch from the ophthalmic arteries so the arteries make a rich anastomosis in the region of the vestibule here so in the region of the vestibule rich arterial supply okay and anterior portion of the septum so which is called the little cilia okay so epitaxis is more common in the bleeding from the nose okay due to rich vascularity okay next is about the venous drainage it begins as a rich plexus in the submucosa accompanies the corresponding arteries and drains into the facial vein ophthalmic vein and sphenopalatine veins okay and about the lymphatic drainage the lymphatics from the vestibule drains into the submandibular group of lymph node and rest of the cavity it drains into the upper cervical deep uh, upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes okay this is about the lymphatic drainage of the nasal cavity and next is functions of the nose and nasal cavity so for the air conditioning warming cleaning and humidifying the inhaled air it provides is not it and air resonance to the voice so it provides resonance to the voice and vocal sounds are also produced in the nasal cavity thus aiding in the vocalization nasal speaking some person who is talk with nose <laughs> no is that it yeah so you know what in the special senses like the sense of the smell okay so it is under the category special sense smelling and it is a central role of the nose in the facial appearance okay for the facial appearance it provides that so by that Well, in the goggle, isn't it? Okay. Special appearance. Next is paranasal sinuses. So, what are these paranasal sinuses? These are the air-filled cavities located in the bones around the nasal cavity. Okay. So, this is a nasal cavity. Around this, there are bones, isn't it? So, those bones pierce the spaces. Okay. so those are called the paranasal sinuses okay paranasal ear sinuses or paranasal sinuses and these are lined by respiratory mucosa so what is that mucosa pseudo stratified isn't it and which is continuous with the mucosa of the nasal cavity and drains into the nasal cavity to the relatively small aperture okay and drainage of the sinuses mainly depends on the movement of the cilia which propels the mucus towards their openings in the nasal cavity so here around the nasal cavity there are air filled cavities or sacs isn't it so here in the frontal bone it bears the frontal ear sinus that is left and right okay so in between these two there is a bony partition here okay frontal sinus and in the body of the maxilla it bears a cavity body of the maxilla so here on left and right so here it is the maxillary ear sinus and sphenoidal sinus and the ethmoidal sinus okay so these are the ear filled cavity around the nasal cavity is it <coughs> so what are the functions of this paranasal sinuses so it lightens the skull okay so due to presence of the air the how is the skull it becomes light 
isn't it? Due to presence of the air and acts as a resonant chamber for the speech.